everybody. Us Coast to Coast Pourers are back with this week's challenge from Meta. It is an open cup. Thank goodness there is no silicone involved. And yes, Chris Jezik, I'm sure you're laughing right about now. You guys know I love, love, love open cups. This is um, a 20 by 24 canvas that uh, I tried to do something on and it just didn't quite make the cut. So we are going to recycle. Um, now this pour is a little different from my other open cup pours. I'm not using the same pouring medium that I usually do. And I am using for the first time in an open cup and basically for the first time ever, uh, Amsterdam pearl paints. I have been wanting to play with these for a while. And I just wondered, like my crazy mind does, what would happen if we used these paints in an open cup? Now, if you're familiar with them, if you're not familiar with them, they appear white when they are wet. When they dry, they dry into a color. So I'm using all of the Amsterdam pearl colors that I know of or that I found. Um, so we've got white, red, blue, green, purple, and yellow. They are all going into this mix. I am also using copper and gold, uh, just because I can't do a piece without some metallics. Um, we're doing this on a black base coat. Now my intention was, I wanted to try swiping it after all the paint was on the canvas. Um, but you'll see as I'm putting paint through the cup, and there's a lot of paint in there right now, there's not really anything popping through the black base coat. So it was about at this point, I started getting a little nervous and wasn't quite sure what was going on, but I persevered and kept going. Um, and the result was really, really unique. I will let you watch here just a little bit um, and I will come back and kind of explain what's going on. It was right about here that I started noticing those tiny little specks coming through the black and I breathed somewhat a sigh of relief uh, still not quite sure how it's all going to play out. this point I am really getting worried I'm not seeing those big giant cells popping out of the base coat like I usually do on my open cup pours so uh, let's talk about my pouring medium real quick I did not use my general uh, Liquitex and Floetrol 5050 I used uh, Molly's recipe that she uses in her swipes, which is 70% Floetrol, 30% 
uh, polymer gloss medium and varnish from Creative Inspirations that you can get at Jerry's Artarama. And the reason I used that is because I wanted to swipe it maybe at the end uh, and that particular pouring medium works very well for swiping um, not in a, a bloom anything like that just a regular pour um, so yeah I was starting to get kind of worried uh, I'm looking at it and I'm kind of starting to like it so I'm going to tilt it out to all four corners not go over the edge, just to give me an idea of what I have to work with. Um, you can see I'm thinking about things. So it's like, okay, let's just stretch it out and see what this thing becomes. Um, and I think you're gonna be surprised because I know I was. Now the tilting here is gonna take just a minute. I'm gonna leave it in real time. I think it's, it's a really good teaching point to show sometimes how slow you need to go um, in order to get where you're going if that makes sense um, I have never been a let's just tilt it out four corners boom we're done I, I like to see what I've got to work with and the only way I can do that is by stretching it out um, so this is uh, a little bit thicker mixture. It's not crazy thick, but it's not thin either. Um, and it definitely takes a minute to tilt out. So I hope you guys don't mind, but I'm gonna leave it in real time uh, just so you can see what's happening. starting to like what I'm seeing. It's different than anything I've ever poured before. I've never seen anything quite like this. And of course, because the I'm using pearl paints, uh, there's really not a lot of color. So I'm not sure what cells are gonna be what color where, uh, but I'm really glad I added that copper and that gold because it's going to end up giving this piece a lot of dimension. Um, but yeah, I, I started to feel a lot of relief at this point um, when some composition started showing up. And uh, you can tell again, I was looking at it thinking, what do I wanna keep? How do I wanna, how do I wanna stretch this out? Um, so we're gonna tilt it out and uh, let's see what we come up with. I want you guys to remember that tilting it slowly like this, uh, one, builds patience within your character and patience is a virtue. Um, the other is it's, it's really good practice because it helps you learn where the weight of your paint is. And the slower you tilt it, obviously the more control you're going to have over it. 
which means you're going to have more control over your composition. Um, learning the weight of your paint is so important in fluid acrylics. Um, it, it has a lot to do with how much you tilt off at once, um, you know, where you leave a portion of your composition. Um, it's just, it's really, really good practice um, and something vital for you to know that weight of your paint. Um, so don't think of slow tilting as a bad thing. Um, it's actually a very, very vital lesson. Now, is it just me or is this starting to turn into something really, really cool? Um, it just took a little bit of time for those paints to start showing up. And I'm not sure, I think probably it was because of the pouring medium. Um, I think that varnish probably tends to be a little bit heavier, so it wasn't gonna pop up uh, right out of the base coat like normal pouring medium would. Um, I'm also wondering if because I'm using Amsterdam paints, which are traditionally a little more dense and a little heavier, uh, if that had something to do with it as well. I don't know, but I am really digging what I'm seeing. What do we think? Time will tell. felines guys I'm sorry she's up there you know she has no interest in getting up on that table until I'm doing something on it so my apologies I am thrilled to death with this piece holy moly the colors showed up beautifully they're not overbearing they're not in your face um, this piece is so dark and dramatic and mysterious. Um, it reminds me of an enchanted forest and I absolutely love it. You can see where the gold and the copper provided a lot of definition for this piece. I don't know what it would have looked like if I hadn't have used those colors, but I'm glad I did and I am in love with this piece totally. If you haven't joined the Fluid Art University in my Patreon account, you are missing out on some fun educational content. We would love to have you. Right now I am in Asheville, North Carolina, where I can neither confirm nor deny that I may or may not be attending the freaking wedding of the century in the fluid acrylic world. You know who I'm talking about. Don't worry, I'm gonna try and snag some pictures. Hey, don't go anywhere. Beautiful Chris Jezik is coming up next. Let's go see what she did with her open cup challenge, shall we? Have a great weekend, y'all. <laughs>